So today's video is going to be a full face of first impressions. I'm going to be trying out a bunch of new products on my face. Some of these are new to me, they're not exactly new releases, but I have never personally tried them out before, so I will be giving you my first impressions on those too. But a lot of these are brand new releases. I'm also going to be giving you my thoughts on the Anastasia Subculture Palette. It's what I have on my eyes right now. And this video is a thousand years long I just I already know because I just finished filming it but I don't want to drag this intro on too long so without further ado if you want to see my first impressions on a ton of products then just keep watching okay so I'm gonna start off with the eye makeup I'm gonna be diving into the new Anastasia subculture palette I just got back from LA so I wasn't able to play with this earlier but it is here now and I know there's a lot of controversy around this palette and honestly my Anastasia modern Renaissance palette has a lot of fallout, not as much as this one does. I haven't used mine yet, but from the videos I've seen, my Modern Renaissance palette does not have that much fallout, but it still has, it still has a lot of kick up. My issue is how it works on the eyes, because if you just use like a very light hand and you just put your brush right into the product, I mean, a lot comes off. It's still usable unless it just doesn't blend well on the eyes, and I've seen a lot of videos where these eyeshadows just don't really work on the eyes. It's so weird. That is what concerns me. Not so much the kick up. The kick up is crazy because I've seen a lot of people like hit pan so fast. But anyway, we're going to use this for the first time today and I'm going to give you my opinion, my first impressions. Now, I have already primed my lids and I'm going to take the shade Dawn right here. And I'm going to use this to set down my eyeshadow primer. Now I'm gonna take the shade New Wave. This one does have a lot of kick up as you can see. The other major downside to kick up obviously is that you're probably gonna go through these shadows a lot quicker. Wow, this one is super pigmented. I have enough to put it on both of my eyes. <laughs> probably will go through product a little bit quicker, but I mean, as you can see, this eyeshadow is so pigmented that I really didn't need to dip my brush in that many times. I'm gonna take a little bit of Roxy, which is this really pretty pinky shade. See, I've seen a lot of videos where people dip into this palette and just go like this and the powder flies everywhere. So I don't know if mine is different, but the kick up isn't as terrible as I've seen. I think there is a batch problem. Like there were a ton of palettes that weren't pressed correctly. I don't know if I'm making that up, but I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere. But I'm taking a little bit of Roxy. And I'm just going to apply this in like the same areas. But I'm not blowing it out as much as I did with the yellow color. I'm gonna go back into New Wave and just add some more of that. I'm gonna take a little bit of this shade right here called All Star. I am just going to apply this. Oh my gosh, this is so pigmented. I'm a little scared. Okay, you definitely do not need to dip your brush that many times into the pan. Just use a very, very light hand and you will pick up a lot of pigment. So that could be a little intimidating for those of you who don't really work with eyeshadows. The shade does get a little bit muddy as you're blending it. It just doesn't look as plummy when you apply it to the lids. It almost gets a little darker, like it oxidizes. But I really, really like the other two shades I've used so far. It, gets, it just gets a little muddy. I'm gonna go back into New Wave. I love this shade. It's so good. So pigmented. I'm just gonna blend out that crease a little bit because it got a little gray in the crease with that all-star shade. I really want to use this shade Adorn right here. And I'm probably going to end up using MAC Fix Plus with this. Just because shimmery eyeshadows just apply so much better with Fix Plus. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Thank you. 
And I'm gonna bring this color almost till the end, but I'm not gonna bring it all the way to the end because I'm gonna put another eyeshadow there anyway. With all the fun colors that are in this palette, and look at the look I'm doing. Oh gosh, you're so basic, Kathleen. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of this color called Edge right here. And I am going to run this directly into the crease just to blend everything out. I'm gonna take this shade Fudge. Which, by the way, I find it so weird that they included a shade in this palette called Fudge when they already have an eyeshadow called Fudge, but it's not the same color. They're both brown, but this one is much warmer, and they're just not the same brown. So I don't, I don't, I don't know what that's about. That's a little weird. I am just gonna buff this color right here into the crease. And I'm also using this shade to kind of blend the gold and the brown together. I'm gonna go back and blend the edges of this eyeshadow in a second. I'm gonna take a little bit of this Rally shade. It's like the dark, dark, dark purple. And this is what I'm gonna use to deepen up the outer corners here. I'm gonna go back into the shade New Wave, but I'm not gonna apply too much of this because this is a super pigmented eyeshadow. So I'm really gonna tap that off. And I am just going to blow out this crease just so it could look a little bit more blended and not so harsh. Okay, so major thing I don't like about this palette is that there really isn't a light highlight shade. We have Cube here, but it has a super strong pink undertone. It's like a duochrome. So I am gonna dip into another eyeshadow, or highlight, I should say. I'm gonna take the Wet n Wild highlight in Golden Flower Crown, and I'm gonna use this to highlight the brow bone. I'm also gonna use this on the inner corners. I'm gonna apply some more after I do my face makeup, because. Most likely this will get blended away. I'm gonna wipe away some of this fallout. I thought it was gonna be a lot worse, but it wasn't too bad. But now I'm gonna quickly move on to the face before I finish up the eye. Okay, the primer I'm gonna be trying out is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. It is a primer and moisturizer in one. When I saw that they were releasing this, I got really excited because that sounds like a dream for me. It says it has hyaluronic acid and niacinamide. Don't know what that is, but it has it. And I'm just gonna shake this, pump it onto my fingers, and put it on my face. Ooh, feels like water. It's extremely slippy, holy crap. I've never put on a primer this wet. Is that weird? Okay, it's starting to sink into the skin and it gets a little thicker. Like it feels a little bit more moisturizing and not so watery. I think I like this though. My skin actually feels like plump and hydrated. So the foundation I'm gonna be using is not very new. This has been out for a long time now, but this is the Maybelline Dream Cushion Liquid Foundation on the go. I have not tried this. It's been sitting on my vanity for months now. I picked up the shade 30 Warm Nude, now that I have a little bit of a tan going on. I'm gonna use my Beauty Blender with this. I know I should have used the little cushion thing that comes with this, but I never use those. I know it's meant to be used with that, but I just, I never use those, so. With this kind of eye makeup, I probably should have gone with something more full coverage. Like you think cushion foundation, you think sheer, lightweight, not a lot of coverage, but I feel like this cushion foundation has a little bit more coverage than I'm used to with a cushion. Actually, you know what probably would be better with this? A brush. Let me try a brush. You know, I thought I wasn't gonna like this. I thought it was gonna be, I don't know what I thought, but I really didn't think I was gonna like this foundation, but I think I do. It looks really, really natural, but it has a soft dewiness to it. Soft dewiness, does that even make sense? I don't know. 
cute. For concealer, I do have a new concealer to try out, but it's way too light for me. This is the Revlon Youth Fix Fill and Blur Concealer, and I got the shade light, so I am gonna be mixing it. I'm gonna apply it. I, oh, see what happens when you're impatient? Oh, gosh. I just hate clicky things. <laughs> Actually, this color might be okay. Let me just blend this out. Oh no, the color's good. Besides, my foundation is looking a little dark, so. I think this is a pretty decent concealer. I don't know, I don't really have anything negative to say, but it's not like amazing. This is weird, this is a weird feeling. It's not thick or anything, I like how it's blending out. I'm such a savage. And I think the coverage is pretty good. It's not extremely full coverage, but I think it covers enough. It leaves you a little dewy, which I like, a little hydrated. My under eyes don't look dry or anything. And I like how it looks on the face, like not just under the eyes, I like it. Like, I like it to highlight with. It's very creamy. Now I'm just gonna apply some on the rest of my face. It just blends so easily too, like boom, 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 blended. All right, let's set that under eye concealer, shall we? I'm gonna be using the new Pixi Quick Fix Powder. And this is in the shade Translucid. And the packaging is really strange. It has this like puff thing and the product is down here and it goes through the puff like I don't know if you can see the powder and that's how you use it on your face you kind of stamp it but I do want to use a different powder on the rest of my face so I'm only gonna be using this underneath my eyes and the places I applied concealer so I'm gonna open this like this I'm really gonna focus this powder right underneath the eyes I'm not gonna bring this down because I am gonna use a liquid highlighter This does leave you really smooth. Like it smoothed out the skin here underneath the eyes. And it doesn't look drying on the skin. My only concern is the extreme white powder. I'm gonna take a flash test at the end of this and I'll let you know if there's any flashback. Alrighty, before I apply powder to the rest of my face, I'm gonna try this bad boy out. This bad boy. This is the new Anastasia Liquid Glow Face Highlighter. I'm so excited to try this. I'm gonna use the shade Perla or Perla. You can see how it looks swatched right there. Super intense. And let's see how this applies. I'm nervous. Liquid highlight makes me so nervous. I really like that. It does look super subtle, but it catches the light really nicely. I don't think it's as good as the Cover Effects liquid highlights but it's probably not as expensive either. This definitely dries down pretty quickly, so you do have to work with it fast, but it is nice that it does this, so it doesn't stay like sticky or tacky on the skin, because when I touch my cheek, it doesn't feel like I have liquid highlight on it anymore. I have to play around with it a little bit more, but based off first impressions, I totally like this. Very pretty. Now I'm just gonna apply some powder on my entire face. I just want a light dusting of this powder just to try it out. This is their Translucent Pressed Beauty Powder and it is called the Luminizer. So it is a shimmery, like iridescent, sheeny kind of powder. I love a little bit of a sheen to the skin. It's really, really subtle but I can see I have to look really closely. This is me just dissecting the crap out of this. If I look really closely, you can see little silver specks on my face, and you can really see it here in the powder. There's a little silver glitters throughout this, and I wish there wasn't. I wish it was more of like a sheen, just like a natural sheen, but it does have those little specks of glitter. Um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about this just yet. I will play around with it a little bit more, but the little glitters that are thrown throughout the sheen, Kind of put me off. Okay, so really quickly, I'm gonna finish up my eye makeup. All right, what do I wanna use, what do I wanna use? I wanna use colors that I haven't used yet. I'm gonna take the shade Axis right here. This color is so pretty. And I'm just gonna... Okay, 
I know that looks really aggressive. I know it looks really aggressive, but we will go in and fix that. I'm gonna take the Essence Gel Eye Pencil in the shade Blue Lagoon. I've actually never used this on my eyes before, so. I'm using this on the waterline. Oh wow, I really like this eyeliner. Oh, I'm also gonna tight line with this, might as well. Okay, so now to blend everything out, I'm gonna take New Wave and I'm gonna blend right underneath that blue color, that bluish green, ow, just stab my eye. Now for the finishing touch, I'm gonna take Rowdy and I am going to apply this right on the outer corners just to match the top lid here at the edge. I know this look calls for falsies, but I'm not gonna put them on. I love wearing falsies, don't get me wrong. It totally does complete a look. It looks way better. But sometimes I'm content with just mascara. Kind of extending the lower lash line here on the outer parts so it looks kind of like a wing, but like a bottom wing. I'm not taking any more product, I'm just extending it with my brush. I don't have a new mascara to try out, so I am gonna apply my mascara off camera and I'll be right back. But I'm gonna be using the Koki Volume and Length Mascara. Okay, so I think I got a good palette. Like I said earlier, I'm pretty sure Norvina addressed the fact that there were inconsistencies with the batches or with the palettes. These do have a ton of fallout. They have a ton of kick up, but mine don't have as much as I've seen on YouTube. I've seen tons of videos on this palette and some of these were like, bad some of these weren't even blending that people had a ton of fallout some people were hitting pan but do i think it's good i do i really do think it's good i love the eye look i created with this i didn't have any issues the only eyeshadow i do not like at all is all star but the rest of the colors i used i don't know i really like it i know i know that's a super unpopular opinion but i think i got one of the good palettes and if you're someone who got a bad palette contact customer service and i'm sure they will sort things out but if you haven't purchased, I would say hold off and wait until maybe they fix the issue and then purchase it. Anyway, let's move on to the rest of the face. We are almost done. Okay, so sometimes I will buy something just based on packaging alone, even if it's expensive. Sometimes packaging does things to me. And I bought this. Oh, I'm sorry, but this is a Chanel bronzer. This is the Le Beige Healthy Glow Luminous color. Hopefully the bronzer is actually good. So it does feel a little dusty. Like I put my brush in there and it's a little dusty, but we shall see. I'm just going to dip my brush in there. I, I do not like the scent of this bronzer. Oh my gosh. It is so strong. Whoa. A lot of their stuff is heavily fragranced which is why I don't really purchase anything from Chanel, which is why I don't really purchase from a lot of luxury brands. Some companies put so much fragrance in their product that it kind of like throws me off. Um, I'm not seeing like much color show up on my skin. This is probably a little bit too light for my tan right now. I feel like not a lot of product is really showing up. Which could be a good thing for those of you who like a really simple, natural makeup. It's not super pigmented, so you don't need a light hand with this. You actually need a heavy hand with this. I don't think I like this. I'm actually pretty shocked because I expected to like it. I feel like it's not doing anything and this is like $60. So, mm, nah. Nah. I'm gonna take my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Definitely a major thumbs down for that bronzer. Am I being too critical or was that like not even showing up? And girl, that's expensive. You better do more than that. Okay, so for blush, I do want to try this out. I don't know if this will go with my look, but Dose of Colors came out with an entire mint collection. This one is the Blush Like You Mint It blush. And this one is called Amazement. And it's just like a really pretty peachy pink with some gold. Add a little bit. 
I'm being very subtle with the way I'm applying this, but I like it. The golden sheen isn't too much. Sometimes I don't like shimmery blushes because it'll make your pores look really large, but the sheen in this blush is very subtle. The golden undertone is just right and there isn't any chunky glitter in this. Very well done, Dose of Colors. I like this blush. So for highlight, I'm actually going in with this guy. I've had it for a while, but I haven't tried it on my face. I have a feeling I'm not gonna like this because I don't love the other rainbow highlighter by Wet n Wild, but this one is all gold, so maybe I'll like it. This one's called Bronze Over the Rainbow. I just didn't love the formula of the other one either. It wasn't just the colors. I didn't like the formula, but I'm gonna stay in this range right here where it's like the lightest shades. By the way, this is a brush from Sephora that was like a trillion dollars. It's from a brand called Surat, and honestly, it was the most expensive brush in the world, but I don't regret buying it. I love using this to highlight. Yeah, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like the formula of this. It's just too chunky. It's not a sheen. If you guys had a dollar for every time I've ever said sheen on my channel, you'd be a rich girl, a boy. I just feel like it's so chunky and glittery and just, I don't like this. We're gonna fix that with a little bit of setting spray. Setting spray always tones down a highlight and makes it look more natural, so that's what we're doing. I don't have a new setting spray to try out, so I'm just gonna use my Morphe one. I know it's sold out, so I hate using this, but... Just gonna let that dry, sink right into the skin, and the highlight is gonna become one with the skin. Okay, now that I have fanned myself down, by the way, best purchase on Amazon I've ever made. I'm gonna be using a new lipstick I have never tried before. This isn't brand new or anything, but I'm, it's pretty new to her line. This is the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in the shade Pillow Talk, which she has a super iconic lip liner called Pillow Talk, and I love that one. I haven't used it in so long, but it was my go-to for a long time, and she released a lipstick shade in Pillow Talk. So I'm going to apply it to see how it is. This is like a your lips but better shade, just a little deeper. I love how this lipstick feels. It is so creamy, they're so comfortable and just so amazing. They also smell amazing. They smell like MAC lipsticks, but they're way better than MAC lipsticks. The formula is 10 times better than MAC. Okay guys, so that completes this video. These were my first impressions on everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you like these videos. I'll do them more often. I love just trying out a bunch of products for you guys. And yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. No. Niacinamide. And niacinamide. I'm going to go back and blend the edges of these. I'm going to go back and blend the edges of this. The edges of this. Ain't it good to be a brave girl tonight? Gracias. Mom. Oh. <coughs> Mom, Celine, come on. Come on. Go, Celine. Just leave her. She's fine. <laughs> My mirror is so dirty that, like, I can't even see what I'm doing. Ah, that's better. A brave girl tonight.